Hello, uh, Mr. Klein here. I'm just here with a short demonstration video as far as working with using the um, layer blending effects. And I wanted to kind of give you a quick little introduction to Pixlr and Lily can say hi. Um, hope you're all doing well. And at any time, again, feel free to email me um, if you have a question or if you have a comment or stop in with one of our Zoom meetings and say hi or ask your questions there. So let's dive in. Um, I want to do a little bit of basic information about Pixlr. Again, if you have not had a chance to try Pixlr out on your Chromebook or on your laptop, um, please do so soon. If you have questions, let me know. I know there has been a few students who had some issues with Pixlr running right away, and we did get them all solved. But again, let me know if you have any of those questions. Um, so on my screen, you'll see basically what you'll see when you start up Pixlr on your computer, on a Chromebook. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna choose Pixlr E. Now I haven't had much of a chance to play with the Pixlr X. Um, if you wanna give it a try, go for it. Uh, but I'm gonna stick with Pixlr E because it's very similar to Photoshop and very similar to what we're used to. Now things are a little different and you'll see the icons are a little changed, but I think you'd be surprised at how much of it really is similar to Photoshop, at least with the basic functions. So I'm gonna click Launch Pixlr E. And you'll get to this welcome screen. Now, once you start using Pixlr E a little bit more, um, you will find that you'll have a history. I've cleared my history out for now, so it's kind of similar to what you will have when you open up Pixlr. And over on the left side, you can see I have a history. I have create new stock search. I'm gonna hit open image. Now I'm using Pixlr right now from a laptop. Um, if you're using Pixlr from a Chromebook, you'll find that you should be able to link your Chromebook directly to, um, or your Pixlr directly to your Google Drive. So be sure you have your images in your Google Drive first. And at any time you can just stop or set this window aside and obviously take care of getting those images uploaded. Again, for transferring your photographs from your phone to Google Drive, um, I would recommend installing the Google Drive app either on your Android or iPhone and then transfer them right into your school email account drive. Um, and I think most of you have had some experience with that already. And if not, again, just send me an email. I'm happy to help you out. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit open image. And again, this is where I'm gonna see my downloads folder, um, but you'll see your Google Drive. So I'm gonna go to the same images actually that we used in class. Um, you can see I already did my homework a little bit. I have one that I finished to make sure it works. So I'm gonna click on my gloomy background. Um, again, this is that same picture that we used in class. I'm gonna slide myself around a little bit. Um, this is that image that we used in class, a picture of Door County. And again, it's very, very dark, very drizzly, drainy, kind of nasty day outside. Um, and just a quick couple things before we get into our blending effects, is I can easily go up to things like adjustments. Um, we talked about levels quite a bit. And I can see if I go to adjustment, I have that same levels option. So I'm gonna click on levels and I'm gonna leave this image pretty dark. Um, but if I wanna kind of change it, if I wanted to brighten it up, again, we have our dark tones, our mid tones and our highlights. And I could maybe even take these mid tones and I could boost them a little bit more. So we have more colors between the middle gray and white. And I can see what this image is actually all about. But for the sake of this kind of silhouette, or this kind of kind of layer blending effects. I'm gonna keep this as more or less just a silhouette of an image. I may actually lighten up the brights um, just to get that sky to really stand out. And again, experiment with your photographs. Try things out, see how they work. Um, your first image may not work perfect. Uh, this means head out and, and find some new ones. And you can head outside if you have a chance to walk around. And if you wanna just take things inside of pets, family, whatever you have, um, any of those would be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna hit apply here. And now I'm gonna dive into uh, adding a second layer with a second image. And this is where things will be a little bit different than with Photoshop. In Photoshop, again, remember we grabbed that second window. We simply made it so we could see both windows and we could drag it across. And here I'm gonna look at my layers panel, which is over on the right side. And I can do a few things here, but I can't do much. But if I look at the, the very beginning of my background layer, I have the three little dots that pop up with layer settings. 
And this is really the key in Pixlr to where we find some of the options that we found before in Photoshop. So I'm gonna click on layer settings. And I'm gonna move myself over again here. And the first thing is I can change the name. So if I just wanna call this uh, maybe something a little different, maybe house on, on the hill, very descriptive. I'm gonna skip over blending right, mode right now and come back to transparency as well. Um, that's obviously what this is all about. Uh, but I'm gonna go down, you can see we can have it locked or unlocked, we can have it visible or hidden. And then we have some other options at the very bottom of our settings. If I just hover over them, you can see I can merge down if I wanted to merge my layers together, merging visible. I could flatten my image. I could duplicate this, which is a handy feature if you wanna make a copy of a layer, or I could just delete this layer altogether. I'm fine with how I have it, so I just changed its name, and I'm gonna X that out. Now, if I wanna add a second image, um, this is almost easier than with Photoshop. I'm gonna look again back in my layers panel, and if I click on the little plus, it's gonna give me an option to make a new layer, and I'm gonna click on that. You see, what kind of layer do I want to add? I can either add an empty layer, if I want to include some drawing or a gradient, I could do an image, which I'll do here in a second, or I could just add a text layer. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add an image. And as soon as I click on this, it'll take a second, but my computer will pop up with what image do I want to add? And there is our pumpkin photograph. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna hit open. All right, so I added my second layer. Uh, looking over in my layers panel now, I wanna be sure to keep track of which layer is highlighted. Again, the highlighted one will turn blue, um, exactly the same as in Photoshop. So if I wanna zoom in or zoom out, or if I wanna apply some free transformation of this image, if you have a computer with a mouse, um, you can easily just roll your mouse wheel back and forth, or there's a zoom tool which you can experiment with as well. Um, I can also grab the corners, and if I want to scale this image down and move it around, I can easily do that. Um, right now, if I see what tool I'm on, I am on the Arrange tool, which is just like the Move tool. But I want to leave that pretty big. I actually may make it even a little bit bigger than what it originally was. I want this nice bright orange to really stand out. And I can have my image go outside of my visible area. Uh, Photoshop is perfectly fine with that, or Pixlr is fine with that. So I'm gonna keep it right there. I'm gonna get rid of some of this. There's a, that person standing here, kind of looking, just looking at what's going on. I don't like that. And I don't like this background either. Um, so I can easily get rid of that in my next step. All right, so I'm gonna go back and actually do a blending mode. Um, if I click off of that, it'll again get rid of that transform box. Uh, before I do the blending mode, I need to be sure, like we did with Photoshop, make sure that your layer effects, in my case, layer effects underscore pumpkin layer is the highlighted layer. And to get to my blending effects, I'm gonna go to layer settings, just like we were a minute ago. And I can change the name. I'm just gonna maybe just call this pumpkin. I know for just a image that only has a, oops, I forgot this, the K. Okay. Um, oh my goodness, pumpkin, there we go. Um, I'm gonna go to the blending mode though. And when I click on the blending modes, you're gonna see a lot of familiar options. Multiply screen overlay and so on. These are pretty much the exact same op options that we had in Photoshop. Um, all the way ending down with that hue, saturation, color, luminosity. So I'm gonna just try one and again, there's no specific blending mode that will work perfect for you. A lot depends on what your foreground image or your top image is and what your background image is like. I'm gonna just try overlay. And that actually looks pretty nice. I think that's the one I ended with for my last test image. Um, I can keep it locked or unlocked. Transparency again, I can also fade that away. It does let you go all the way down to zero which again is making a completely clear layer. I don't want that. I'm gonna leave that transparency all the way up. All right, so I'm gonna close that down. Now, if I still wanted to go in here and move this image, I can. Um, I also wanna, again, get rid of some of this on top. I don't really care for that that much. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna choose my eraser tool. Um, again, same tool, if you hover over it, it'll tell you it's the eraser. 
If you look up in the top left corner, actually very similar to Photoshop again, I can click on my brush size and also instead of the hardness, now they call it softness. Very tricky. So I'm gonna change my size. Now I'm gonna go pretty big and I'm gonna go very, very soft. Also next to that is an opacity. Again, you don't have to use your eraser at 100%. I'm gonna lower this down to about 20. I have 21%, that's close enough. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm just wanna fade away some of this background. And again, we've talked many times about watching the backgrounds of your photograph, that you don't wanna have that distracting element back there especially this kind of red dot. I think it's literally the open sign of this business. Um, and I wanna kind of repeatedly go over it. And again, every time I'm erasing this, it's only erasing 20%. So with that opacity turned down very low, it's not gonna do a whole lot. You're not gonna see that hard edge, which I really don't wanna see. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe fade a little bit in this back corner. And other than that, I think my blending effects with my pumpkin and my kind of silhouette have turned out pretty good. It almost looks like there's a pumpkin sunset. So I'm gonna save this quick and that will kind of conclude this video. Again, saving will be a little different on your computer or your Chromebook because it will save to your Google Drive. So I'm gonna to go to File and I'm just simply gonna to go to Save. It's gonna ask me for the file name. And I'm gonna call this Layer Effects and I'm gonna put dash done. And this was only with two images. I'd like you to try with three. However, it gives you file types. I'm gonna choose JPG or JPEG, and I'm gonna leave that quality up to 90 or 100% and very high resolution. And with that, I'm gonna move this aside. There it is. I'm gonna be done and I'm gonna click the download button. Down in the lower right corner, you'll see it does take a minute and that's one thing to kind of get used to with using Pixlr is things don't happen quite as instantly as they did with Photoshop. But either way, I have a nice layer effect with blending modes. So again, let me know if you have any questions or concerns or something isn't working right. I'm happy to help you out. Thanks, have a good day.